Welcome to Soul Tea with Marie. I have a special guest tonight. This is Jerry from Naturally Gifted with Jerry. Uh, she is going to be talking about all things crystals this evening. So say hello, my friends. I can't hear you. So I can't, I can't hear you, Jerry. Is your sound on? No sound? Well, okay. I, I can't hear you. Maybe she's muted. So when she, um, I am live. So I am gonna give her a minute to unmute herself. Um, what we're going to do is talk about crystals, why we have them, why we use them, um, the different ways that they come, obviously, as rocks. But I even uh, in lieu of Jerry being here, I have this um, mug that I found. It has a little heart on it, and it has a rose quartz, which is for love. I also have, oh, let me get it. Let me do a little stretch. I don't have my crystals out, but... Uh, so this is also a rose quartz pendulum that I use when I want to um, get in contact with one of my guides or I have any questions. Uh, there she is. Uh, Welcome back. I don't know what happened. I was like, I can't hear anything. I can't. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. So this is Jerry with Naturally Gifted with Jerry. That is her store where she sells all types of things, metaphysical. I do readings there. Other people do readings, um, all kinds of things. Tell, give a quick quick rundown of my store. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, so, so I'm Jerry, and uh, I have a, a nice shop in Elizabethtown. I sell oils, crystals incense, candles, uh, all kinds of things that uh, I always say, I want people to feel better when they leave this store than when they came in. So things that, that will make you, light you up, make you feel better, just uh, make a connection. So that's that's my goal when people come in. So that's, uh, that's part of it. And I also love, my favorite thing to lift up is that 95% uh, of my store is locally sourced. So local PA, the state I'm from, or local Elizabeth okay. Town, the town where I'm from. So, okay. So I All love right. lifting up local. All right. Well, so. we are going to talk about crystals. So why or how did you get into crystals? Oh my goodness. I think I've always, I've always been drawn to them. It just uh, it wasn't until I got older that I started to realize that I was sensitive to their energies and and I was able to connect with them. Uh, and interestingly enough, my last name, my maiden name is Stone. So I, <laughs> I always thought that was a neat little uh, nod to the universe there that, you know, they give me this this gift of, of being able to connect to crystals and I have a maiden name of Stone, so. <laughs> oh, wow, that's but, neat. Yeah, I thought it was a nice little coincidence. Uh, there's a lot of different, like, you know, why uh, why people would be drawn to them, why they want to use them. Uh, a lot of people will ask me, like, how do I know what stone I want or what is it that I'm looking for? And uh, I tell people a lot of times if you're in a crystal shop or you pass anything really, not just crystals, but if you see something that it, 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 you keep going back to, then the crystal, uh, it's trying to, to balance that energy for you. So when I tell it like crystals, the, the, their energy is always the same. Like their energy never changes. Our energy changes day to day, hour to hour. So when you see a crystal that keeps, you know, speaking to you, like say amethyst, a lot of people are drawn to amethyst, then on that level, that amethyst is trying to balance out that energy for you or to clear a blockage. Well, let me ask you this. So would you say that crystals, if you're using them, if you put them, I know if you put them outside with the moon or with the sun, they actually will um, have more energy to them. Would you agree with that? How does that work? 
So the the concept with that is is that the energy uh, of the moon or the sun, whichever you choose to put them out there, will pull away any negative energy that the that has been uh, stored in the stone. So it'll help cleanse it and clear it so that it is like a fresh canvas. So and that's that you our can energy, use. correct? That's energy yes. that or energy that we're trying to, that, that we've absorbed in some way, correct? Right, exactly, exactly. And then even crystals like in rooms and things, like a lot of times, uh, you know, when people have uh, crystals in their rooms and their office or things, it's also absorbing the energy of the space. So that's a lot of times when you will put them out, sunlight, moonlight, um, a lot of times, you know, you can uh, sage them. So it just kind of depends on your preference on, on cleansing and clearing. But yeah, it does, I, I do uh, agree that it would help, it helps clear them for uh, future use. And then some uh, people will believe that when a stone has absorbed too much negative energy, it will break. And it, it's happened. I've seen it happen. Yeah, yeah and it'll break for, yeah, or you'll you know lose it or whatever. Like that stone's done. Like, and then you have to you have to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you say? Because um, you're talking about negative energy and things like that. So, what stones do you think are good for protection, or what stones should I keep in my pocket when I'm throughout the day? Do you recommend? Well, there's always, uh, there's like the seven essentials, but I'll go into that in a little bit. But the best like crystals for protection, a lot of times would be, um, say your, your, your black stones, ones that have a lot of grounding and, and boundary uh, protection. And um, uh, black, uh, black tourmaline uh, is one that's a, a great one for boundaries and protection, obsidian, uh, and do you have any there with you? Do you have one with you? I, I do, but I don't actually have any of those. <laughs> All right. I have, Keep going. Keep going. I have other ones with me, but not actually. I'm like, am I wearing any? No, I'm not. I'm wearing them, but not those, not those particular it's all right. ones. You're prepared. It's okay. Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, and then like a lot of times when you ask like, what would you carry in your pocket? A lot of times I will often think, where are you going? What are you going to do? that you might, you know, might gear you towards particular stones. Um, Let's say I, was one, going, I was going on a first date. What should I take with me? Oh, okay. So you would want a stone for, well, protection. So you would do like, say, you know, uh, hematite, hematite or black tourmaline. Those are good ones. You would also want one, so say carnelian. Carnelian is good for like, motivation, courage, but it also has like some sexual energy to it. So you might want to see how, how, you know, play up on that. Uh, you uh, would want something for communication. So, because you want to make sure, you know, you can communicate. So uh, a lot of times like blue stones uh, are really good for communication, like turquoise, uh, aquamarine, blue chalcedony. Those are great ones for, to kind of help keep you, you know, the communication lines open. Uh, but then pyrite is also, I always say pyrite is a good anytime you're going out uh, because shamans used to put that in their medicine bags and that would be like for journeys and stuff. So it was, uh, they would keep them as far as keeping them safe, you know, safe travels. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Which stone yeah. is that? Again? Which stone? Pyrite. The pyrite. pyrite, fool's gold. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. That I remember that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> I'll remind you too, that's okay. Um, so, okay, so so that would be on a date. So let's just say, um, just day to day, like if I want to um, have a clean home, I know we sage and, uh, you know, we, we pray to our guides. I know before we started, before I started any of the shows, I always, you know, do a cleansing of my area and oh. anything that might be here. So what kind of stones would I wanna put around or crystals what I want to put around my home. Like I know we put them at the windows, you put them at the at the doors. Right, right. So good ones to have again are uh obsidian, like a lot of times, like say at your doorways, uh and your any entryways, uh obsidian is a good one to protect against negative energy. Um selenite, 
Selenite is a great one at windows and, and doorways to, to bring in positive energy. And it also transmutes negative energy into positive. So um, you would want to put both of them there, correct? Um, you could. So actually at uh, my doorway at the, at the store, mm -hmm. I have above the door, I have a piece of selenite, but then down at the, uh, on the like floor at the entryway is a piece of obsidian. So I've kind of got people coming and going. So, <laughs> but the, so that you, so you could, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna give you that extra protection. They'll, they'll, they'll work together. And then uh, another good one is citrine. So mm -hmm. I always tell people like citrine is great for like at your windows. So I, I consider citrine like sunshine in a stone. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of positive creative energy. So when you put it at your windows, you're inviting that, that creative energy in. It's positive. It's also a great stone for abundance. So if you want to, you know, depending on what your abundance. So, so if you want to win the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got yes. It. And if you want to put it in the farthest left corner of your house, <laughs> that's the abundance corner or the, or wherever you live, your farthest left corner is your abundance corner. So you could put, you could do that. And then clear. So why quartz. is that though? I'm curious. Why do we want to put that in the far left corner for abundance? It's well, that's a feng shui. I'm not really sure how like oh. it's, that's, that's a feng shui thing. So yeah, that's, um, I, I done some different research on uh, different like placements and things, and and yeah, the farthest left corner is is the abundance corner. I'm not sure why they've deemed it that, but so when we put our crystals on our windows or we put them um, above the door, would that be far left or is that far right or in the middle? Where where would we put those? I mean, I guess that kind of depends on where your door is. Cause I know I have, like, I have just a set, like I have the ones on my door and I have them at the window, but then I'll have a little couple, like just in the corner, like the farthest. So it just kind of, you know, it, so it depends on the layout of your house. Cause you could also just do it the far left corner of whatever room you're in or the far left corner of your desk or, you know, that's, I don't know. Yeah, for some of the, because I know they said it could be in your room, your home, which I, you know, your space. All right. I wasn't know. sure because I know you want to, we want to take the negative energy out of our home and then we want to bring in the positive energy. And I know when we do, when we have the sage, it's, um, you know, we do this, the over under. So over, right, right. push it out and then under. So I don't know if it's left it back for in. abundance and then for right. It would be for you know the protective to push it all out. I wonder. Well, maybe, and I it might also be in because you know you know the right is to give, the left is to receive. Yeah. So yeah. that might it might also be in you know kind of correlate with that. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think we figured that out. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so I'm curious. I don't know if you know about this. So star seeds. Obviously, you know, that's Andromeda and Sirius and all of that. Yes. What, what uh, crystals do they attribute to different star seeds? Well, I know, I mean, I don't know specific ones, but I know there are, so there's Lemurian crystals that mm -hmm. is, you know, would be of Lemuria, you know, of Lemuria, that, that Lemurian star seeds would be drawn to, um, uh, celestite, I would think, would be another. Well, let's go back to Lemurian real quick. So, why are they called Lemurian crystals? What What do they do? Is it so? so well, they're very high. It's a high frequency, high vibration stone. Mm -hmm. So, and then if you were to actually look at a piece of Lemurian crystal, you could see. Um, I think they call it like steps. There, it's. Uh, little like inclusions that go up and it's just from the frequency of the the stone they're beautiful beautiful stones they're all, almost like crystal clear you know and they're they are a high frequency and a lot of people when you're they're they're highly sought after for a lot of people do you have one of those there no i didn't i have some but i <laughs> I was trying, I was like grabbing to try to figure out like, 
I got my communication stones. I got let's my see rose. Your, let's see the communication stone. Let's see it. Okay, we got to so, start from crystals. Everyone's like, where's the crystals? She all right. Them. So this is a piece of aquamarine. Okay. This and what, was, what does that do? Uh, aquamarine is a very good tranquil energy, helps with communication, uh, helps activate the throat chakra. So it's oh. a, and yeah, so and a lot of times you can kind of match the color with the chakra. I will mm -hmm. often tell people it's like a little bit of a cheat sheet that if you're trying to like, oh, I want to work with, you know, my solar plexus chakra, what stones should I work with? So your solar plexus chakra correlates the color yellow you would want to try and gear towards, you know, yellow stones like uh, orange calcite, heliodor, uh, citrine, you know, so, and I mean, it's not always a tried and true because those stones also have other properties, but it's a, you know, it's, it's a fairly good rule of thumb that, you know, I, I like that that's worked for me. Yeah. I know when I've done some chakra healing, I do put different crystals on different areas to troll and try and draw out the energy that, you know, if it's right. negative or there's some kind of abusive energy to pull that out and then um, also to pull in positive energy. I mean, that's, you know, like you said, they're a conduit, the crystals. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what else, what, yeah, what else do you have there? Oh, okay. So, all right. So I'll show you, this is my, let's see if I can, this oh, is a big old chunk of rose quartz. Love it. That's and just... that's for, that's for love. I know that. Yes, love for yourself, love for others, uh, to give love, to receive love, friendships. Uh, I have a lot of people that come in like, oh, I have a friend, I don't know what to get, you know, and I go right to Rose Quartz. That's that's like a given, you know. I think that when you go on family, you know, get togethers, try and, you know, feel the love. <laughs> yes, it's in, it's, this piece stays in my living room. Because I always want to make sure there's love in the living room. Uh, what else do I got? What? Ooh, here's another. Let's see if I can. This is amethyst. Ooh. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, hold that up a yeah. little bit higher. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, this is one. Of, oh, this one I keep with my uh, my tarot decks. Mm -hmm. I keep Why? it on top. Just. Uh, that's a connection to, connection to your higher energy entities, um, help protect like bad, uh, helps kind of help with like bad behaviors, people with addiction and addictive personalities, a lot of times amethyst will help them with that, um, helps with sleep dreams, also a good protection stone. That's another good protection stone. Oh, a lot of people don't often... Yeah, a lot of people don't think of amethyst as, but you know, it's got some pretty good oomph to it. <laughs> it's beautiful. What else? Do I, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, here's another one. This is, uh, let's see if I can get a good, this is fluorite. It's trying to. I love the greens. You can't quite yeah. see it um, with your background, yeah, it's, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not a quite so green. enough. That's okay. Yeah. I and love the that? yeah, I love the blues and that. What does that one do? The green one that you just showed. Uh, that's good for like. Well, it helps like keep you in harmony. Also, like uh, keep you in flow, discernment, uh, helping bring clarity to you know anything that might be hidden and kind of you know help shine some light on it. So, so if, and someone I was were, trying to, if someone were to take a test or they were in college, that might be a good one to carry with them. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, to help focus, keep their clarity. Um, I often say another good one is like um, uh, calcite. Calcites are usually good ones to kind of like, uh, there's a chocolate calcite that's good for uh, students and focusing. I used to carry some of that. Um, there's there's a few around, oh, halite would be another good one. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know, I'm trying to think, I was like, well, I got some other. <laughs> Oh no, what have you got there? Let's see it. Okay, well this, let's see if I can get this to flat. Ooh, yeah. There's, this is labradorite. Everybody, ooh. And is that an elephant? Is that what I'm seeing? Yes, yes. It is a labradorite elephant. This was a, a piece that I got from a friend of mine, a fellow crystal shop owner, that I was like, yes, please. <laughs> 
And what does that do? Uh, Labradorite, uh, good for um, bringing to light hidden things that are that mystical mysticism. It's got a lot of uh, magical energy to it. Um, uh, hidden mysteries, I guess, would be like bringing to light hidden mysteries, uh, different things. Um, I'm, trying, I'm drawing a blank. I'm I would think that would be good for channeling. So if you're trying to channel a higher being, an entity, um, sometimes angels, people channel or your guides. I think that would be a good one. If it's mystical. Yeah, that would be. That would be a really good one. As I say, another really good one for that is this one. You can't really tell, but this is uh, blue chalcedony or blue chalcedony. Some people say it one way. So, but this is a great stone for channelers uh, to channel, uh, to connect with your guides. Uh, it's really good with. Uh, communication mm -hmm. so it does open those uh open those uh pathways so if i were to use that for channeling because i do channel would i want to put that outside on a full moon or a new moon not a new moon obviously <laughs> there's no moon uh but a full moon I, would i want to put that out there would I, when would i want to put it outside at, in the evening or before oh, you I mean it. before you use it? Oh, before it, well, you could put, now you can put things out on a new moon because you're getting new energy. So, you know, if you're starting, if you're, you know, thinking you want to start a new project, new moons would be great for that. Um, it, it would depend on where you would, you know, because usually full moons are once a month. So if, you know, it falls you know, outside of that time frame, you would probably maybe just want to smudge it or kind of, you can, sometimes what I'll often do is like, you know, you take it and just speak your intention into it and just bless it and, and what you're looking, you know, and then use it from that, you know, from that point. It, it so would, you the, know. I, let me stop you for one second. For those that don't know what smudging is, do you want to explain what smudging is? Oh, okay. Yes. I'm sorry. So uh, smudging is a, uh, a Native American term, actually, which kind of refers to like the whole process of growing the sage and everything. So they, there are sage bundles uh, that smudging, it's called smudging, it's space clearing. Yes, there we go. That's yeah, a sage bundle. Much, yeah, this is sage. So you would light it and then... You take it all around your home, but you would want to use this with your um, with your stone as well, correct? I have the yes. pendant there, so I would just that, and that's, sage it. Just sage it, and then and people ask because you're like, well, what do you do? I was like, well, as you're saging, you're putting your intention out to cleanse and clear that energy, and then so that's where you know the the intention helps, and then the sage clears the air. But that's so yeah, that's a Native American space cleansing is uh, a note. More, the more common term, I think, anymore, instead of just smudging. That's, smudging is more of an older term. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's, well, I, I know, I, I, you know, for some people that might have like, oh, I know it as space clearing, they might not have known it as smudging. So that's why I know there's a lot of people use space clearing now. So that's why. Oh, that's the, true. To know the, yeah, so know that it's, they're two in the same. But yeah, it actually is a Native American thing referring to the herbs and everything that from growth to to the burning process. So, okay, so the smoke would just go over it. I also use a candle sometimes when I am doing any type of clearing. I'll light a candle. I might take it around the different rooms. Um, even with the pendulum, I might, because before when I was saying my uh, my prayer before this started, I lit the candle and had the pendulum out. So I think that's what might be part of saging at least for me I, I guess it's all intention of what you want to do with or what I was just, are. yeah i was just gonna say it's a lot of, of intention that what you're putting out i said because it's what's in your heart and that's what you're wanting to put out there because i know a lot of times like yeah, if i don't have a sage bundle or something I, a candle or like an incense and and i'll oh, use right. that to you know, to go around, you know, depending on my space and stuff. So that's how, and again, a lot of that is intention-based. So that's where, you know, what I say is what's in your heart, what do you want to put out there? Was So when you're cleansing, clearing, 
you know, you'll say uh, all negative energies uh, that are not welcome here need to leave. I invite in the, you know, uh, all things good, you know. So that's why I tell people is like, whatever it is that you are, want your intention when you're saging. So that's how, that's how I, I do it. I know some people are more tried and true, but. All right, so we are almost out of time. Is there one crystal you want to show or say anything about a crystal? And then go ahead. I was like, I don't know. I have all these different. Well, here's oh, one I didn't. It goes so fast. Okay. I know that this, this is, okay. So this is either, this is called caraway. I don't know <laughs> if you can see the eye in there. Yes. Yeah. That is a stone that is uh, speaks to transformation and intuition. So I just always, I always love finding stones that have like. And what is that called again? Cherowite or caraway. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's mined in Siberia. It's one stone that can only be mined six months out of the year because of the, oh, the permafrost okay. and everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's so. for transformation. Yes, transformation, intuition, connecting to your your uh, spiritual gifts. Okay, so, so. we, all right. Um, I just wanted to thank you for coming on the show because we're almost out of time. And I know there's so much to talk about when it comes to crystals. We could have went on for hours. I know. Um, but I do want to thank you for coming out here. And for anybody that wants to visit her store, she is online on Facebook. She is naturally gifted with Jerry. Um, you can find her there. She's on Instagram and she is in Elizabethtown. Um, and she has all kinds of items there. She has the crystals, she has tarot decks, oracle decks, um, books, and then sage. She has sage. <laughs> so please find her on Facebook. And of course, I am also on Facebook and Instagram under um, Soul Tea. Yeah, Soul Tea with Marie. Uh, and I'm also on YouTube as well. So thank you everyone for coming. Namaste, Jerry.